Fora TV. The world is thinking. Main Street, USA, where once everybody up and down the street and so on knew everybody else, uh, has given way to the mall. And we in Hollywood have lost that sense of community that once characterized the way in which we saw ourselves and defined uh, the values that we considered American. At one time, not too long ago for many of us to remember, Hollywood, USA was a company town where everybody worked for the same dozen or so studios. Everybody knew everybody. Everybody knew everybody knew all about them and they respected their privacy. If you dropped your pants at a party or punched a reporter or danced with a prostitute in a public fountain, it wasn't on enterta entertainment tonight. Tonight. It was even hard to get arrested. Every studio had a publicity department that paid the LA's cops to stay away from movie people. The police didn't arrest movie people, they drove them home. A few movie studios run by colorful, dictatorial, and sometimes extremely unpleasant men dominated the town. We all went down to their film, studio, their film factories every day. At Warner Brothers, even actors, directors, and writers punched a time clock until the mid-1940s. We ate in the studio commissary where the writer's table was the place to sit because the jokes were better there. <laughs> Especially if the New York writers were in town, slumming, sneering at the movies they wrote and cashing their big fat paychecks. You'd find yourself sitting next to Dorothy Parker or F. Scott Fitzgerald. My mother was a screenwriter during the gas rationing of World War II. She commuted to Warner Brothers in a car with William Faulkner and Christopher Isherwood. She said the talk was absolutely brilliant, but if somebody said something that Bill Faulkner didn't like, he got out of the car no matter how fast it was going. <laughs> Even in the span of my career, remnants of this small town atmosphere stung, still hung on together with a shared fascination with the mystery and the glamour of movies. We were starstruck. At Columbia Studios in the mid-1960s, I remember having lunch with Bob Rafelson, then a major direction of motion pictures, and Jack Nicholson, now a basketball fan, <laughs> and a producer who will go nameless, now brain dead, of too many dawnings of the age of Aquarius. At a table only 10 feet away, Marlon Brando was having lunch by himself, and we hadn't met him yet. We were fascinated. We were starstruck. We were watching his every bite. But Nicholson was sitting with his back to it, to, uh, to Brando, so he couldn't see. He just kept asking me, you know, what's, what's he doing now? <laughs> and I said, well, he's on his salad. He's looking for a cherry tomato under the lettuce. <laughs> that was a terrific lunch. It really was, up close and personal. We knew the boss, and we certainly knew who was the boss. 